vehicle designed by a Yorkshire company could see fire crews working as ambulance staff when they arrive at an emergency in future. The all-in-one fire engine and ambulance has been created by Turberg, which is based in Elland near Halifax. It comes as fire services across the country are being asked to consider providing first response medical aid in rural areas. In why it's been given an exclusive preview of the new vehicle. This could be the future, a new kind of emergency vehicle on our streets, a cross between a fire engine and an ambulance. It's been designed by a company in the Calder Valley that makes specialist equipment for emergency services. But the idea is seen by many as controversial, at a time when government cuts have seen fire stations close and the number of operational fire engines reduced. This is a fire engine first and foremost. It's a fire engine that carries four fire crew. It can respond to medical calls, it can attend an RTA, road traffic accident, and they can start to treat the patient with a paramedic in the back, in a safe haven. These vehicles are designed to be operated by firefighters. They'd attend 60% of fire calls, but also be able to deal with medical emergencies too, when there's no ambulance available. Ian, uh, this is the fire compartment of the vehicle, um, designed to carry all the rescue equipment, firefighting equipment. At the back here, uh, Oh yeah, it says it, fire yeah. and ambulance. Yep. Yeah. We have a full medical compartment, same as what you would see in a normal ambulance, capability to triage, stabilise and get the patient ready for transport in a normal road ambulance at the moment. And if there's a fire you need a hose, have you got a we hose? We have got all the hose, we've got the equipment, we've got the cutting equipment and everything as well. Although designed in Yorkshire, there are none of these in use here yet but one is currently being trialled in the southwest. We have to take lessons from abroad. Uh, we have to look at how effective and efficient we can be. The government is pushing very heavily a joint um, emergency services collaboration programme, so this sits nicely within that evolution of the emergency services in the United Kingdom. Critics say this is a change too far, but at a fraction of the cost of a large fire engine and an ambulance, this Yorkshire-designed vehicle could soon be answering 999 calls all over the UK. Ian White, BBC Look North, Elland. Ian White reporting there. So it will mean a changing role for firefighters. What do we make of the new vehicle? I'm joined now by Ian Murray from the Fire Brigades Union. Good evening. What do you think of this? Good evening. Um, Last year our conference decided that uh, we should look at widening the role of firefighters and one of those areas was emergency medical response and currently nationally we've got over 20 trials going on in fire and rescue services up and down the country. Um, but let's make no bones about it, currently the trials we are, we are not trained paramedics, um, we can't carry out all the roles of the paramedics so we would have some caution and obviously our members we, would, we want to ensure that they're appropriately trained to attend the medical emergencies that they'll be turned out to. Absolutely, but it does seem to make complete sense, doesn't it? The number of fires you attend is reduced, so sensible then that hard-pushed ambulance crews could be helped by fire brigades. Yeah, if, if, the, if we can you know, assist in that way, but what we can't do is replace the fire service in those areas because the number of med emergency medical calls is going up and up and up. And then what would happen when somebody has a, has a house fire and they ring up and all of a sudden we don't have a vehicle available uh, because they're all out of medical emergencies. We've got to obviously differentiate between the two services. Is that your main concern? Yeah, we do have concerns and th obviously the first one would be we don't want any reduction in fire cover for the communities that we serve. Nevertheless, they do do this in other countries, don't they? So why not here? Uh, they do, and th they do it very well in other countries, but also they do it um, as standalone. Um, I've, you know, I've been to America and I've seen how they work and they do have paramedics on stations but they have a standalone vehicle even though they're all badged up by the fire department. It is a standalone vehicle. What we don't want is spread ourselves so thin so that we, you know, we are available when we are needed for our primary role of fighting fires. Do you think this could be a slippery slope? Sorry, could you repeat that one? Do you think that this could be a slippery slope, that things could start getting worse for the fire service? Currently, um, you know, fire and rescue services up and down the country are facing massive cuts uh, that we're getting reductions in grants from the government and you know fine rescue services are looking at other ways of, of raising revenue one of these is to take on medical work. Ian Murray thanks ever so much for joining us that's where we'll have to leave it tonight but thank you